It's living on sawdust and string paste to save for diamonds. It's aching for the aunt from the embrace of the mother. What would you choose? A bag of rice or an ounce of democracy? This slide shows an extract of a poem written by a Myanmar poet, Koko Tet, entitled The Dilemma of the Burden of Being Bama. In this poem, he actually illustrates the dilemmas faced by Myanmar citizens as they undergo political and economic liberalization since 2010. In the final line shown in this extract, Koko Tet highlights a key dilemma that is faced by Myanmar citizens that has, undergoing, that has undergone liberalization, but is still politically authoritarian. Is having a bag of rice to feed your family more important, or democracy? My name is Wendy, and I'm from the Faculty of Education and Social Work. My research seeks to understand the, how Myanmar youth internalize these irreconcilabilities as well as incompatibilities in their everyday life, as the forces of change pulls them in different directions. Now, everyone would have heard about the news of the plight of the Rohingyas in Myanmar. Rohingyas are one of Myanmar's many ethnic minority groups, but they are not recognized as any one of the 135 ethnic minorities in Myanmar. They, are, they may have stayed in Myanmar for generations, but they do not have citizenship. And they are referred to as Bengali Muslims by the, by the, by the Bama. This means that they do not see them as an insider. They see them as a foreigner outside of this country. In 2015, the Myanmar government actually had to retract okay, temporary voting rights that were given to the Rohingyas because of nationalist protests by the Buddhists. Recently, what happened is that Rohingya militants actually attacked police posts in northern Rakhine. Military retaliation has actually led to a third of the population leaving the country. And this has created humanitarian as well as refugee crisis for the neighboring states of Malaysia, Thailand, and Bangladesh. There are fears that the violence would actually destabilize the region. What this case clearly illustrates are the challenges as well as the dangers of fragility. And why fragility in Myanmar is a concern for international development agencies and its neighbors. Now, the problem with state fragility. Fragile states are often characterized by ongoing violence and insecurity, as well as weak governance. Because the government is unable to distribute public goods equitably or efficiently, there are also transnational security concerns that arise from the ongoing terrorism and violence, as well as humanitarian concerns. Therefore, Fukuyama actually said that learning to do state building better is actually crucial to the world order. It is also crucial for the states that surround Myanmar. How then can the state be built? What many international development agencies have done is to build the state after its own image. The problem is that in doing so, they actually created many liberal democratic institutions that follow the trend of Western Europe. This means liberal, this means actually having democratic elections as well as creating market economies. But the problem is that this state building based on the Western model have not created peace or development in these global southern states. Now, the question is, whose state has liberal cre state building created? Now, liberal state building has actually created this machine, government machine, that is based on the structures and institutions of the West. But these machines do not respond to the needs of the local population. In fact, the political structures created are so alien to the local population that they are rejected by the local population as something that is alien in the ugly duckling. The baby swan is actually rejected by the other ducklings and seen as an ugly duckling, even though it eventually grows up to be a beautiful swan. Similarly, if Western structures are superimposed okay, on the states in the global south with different traditions, no matter how good it may eventually turn out to be, they will still be rejected by the local population as not being one of them. 
Therefore, I argue that state building should focus on the building of political community rather than governance machineries. Peaceful forms of state order may not be as efficient or as strong as the institutions of the West, but at least they have the legitimacy locally. To take into account local agency, what I have done is to conceptualize state, um, fragile states as hybrid political orders. Now, what do hybrid political orders mean? This picture shows a picture of monks associated with customs and traditions using a laptop associated with modernity. What the idea of hybrid political order can do is that it brings together the idea of the liberal and the illiberal, the local and the international, the formal and the informal, the modern and the customary, all in one space. I am not saying that customary actors and institutions are necessarily better than that of international institutions or that of other groups. But I am arguing that if we want to focus on the state as a political community, local agency cannot be ignored. Now, Currently, there are few empirical studies using the concept of hybrid political orders in the field of state building and peace building. No empirical study has actually applied the concept of hybrid political orders to look at identities and citizenship. My research project seeks to answer the following question. What does young people's understandings of citizenship and the everyday spaces where these understandings are formed tell us about the nature of and ways in which citizenship is produced in hybrid political order like Myanmar. Interestingly, schools are typically seen as the spaces where citizenship is constructed. But rather than focus on schools, I'm going to focus on everyday spaces. If you take a look at the picture, it will show you a tailor shop in Yangon. On the table of this tailor shop, you will see this particular logo. This is the logo of the 969 Buddhist Nationalist Movement. This logo basically means that they actually, these Buddhist nationalist groups actually encourage Buddhists to only visit and patronize Buddhist shops in Myanmar. Because the monks actually claim that if, Mus if Buddhists actually patronize Muslim shops, what happens is that they would endanger their race as well as their religion. Now, I'm going to show you some snippets of Myanmar citizens' comments on the recent Rohingya crisis. This is what they said. They are terrorists to the native population. They are expanding, he said. They produce so many kids, so many children. It's better they go somewhere else. Clearly, what I am trying to show you is that our everyday social cultural spaces are also political spaces that constructs our sense of identity and citizenship. It is the interface between political structures as well as social structures and these spaces affect youth ideas of citizenship. Now, why is this important? Many studies on citizenship actually focus on the school context, but this study seeks to look at everyday context. And scholarship on the topic of citizenship largely focus on politically stable countries. Okay, these countries such as Myanmar, which is actually fragile and has a lot of political instability, are rarely investigated. This study also seeks to address the ethnocentrism that is in scholarship on state building and basically seeks to connect to the agency of local actors. In addition, by listening to the voices of local actors, I hope to address the, six, the state centricity in current literature on state building. I would like to conclude my presentation with the extract of an interview from Myanmar Times. It is a local newspaper which illustrates the challenges of citizenship in Myanmar. The idea of citizenship is typically associated with ideas of equality as well as democracy. This is what he said, I am a Christian. Most of my friends do not understand Christianity. They think it is a race. This society cannot distinguish between race and religion. I have to explain a lot. There is some confusion. Throughout generations we have lived in Myanmar, 
I think that is why I became a citizen of Myanmar. Thank you very much.